Hi, I'm Jeff Kleinman, and you're watching my series on post-concussion syndrome. Uh, it has been almost two years. It'll be two years in April um, since I was hit in the head by a softball, uh, coaching Little League softball here in Marblehead. And uh, I still have post-concussion syndrome. I'm still dealing with uh, the symptoms and issues uh, surrounding PCS. So I wanted to give an update. Uh, the last few videos that I had uh, came in October of 2017 and November of 2017 um, when I experienced really the worst of uh, everything uh, with post-concussion syndrome. Um, my depression, uh, anxiety, and hopelessness really hit uh, rock bottom. And uh, I had the one of the worst days of my life. Um, I'm still here. And a couple things have changed since then. Um, I really used that time as a, a launching point to really look at uh, more, uh, greater dimensionality of care and taking care of myself. Um, I met shortly thereafter with uh, an integrated medicine doctor uh, here in uh, Massachusetts named Ryan Zacklin. Uh, Dr. Zacklin, I, I sat with for uh, over an hour uh, and we talked about my journey through post-concussion syndrome. And uh, at the end of it, um, he sort of blew my mind. Uh, he started talking about holy, healing the whole person and, and, and sort of this world beyond the physical injury. Um, I took a lot of the things he had to say at heart, um, and I've added a number of things to my care that I feel are now sort of mandatory, foundational things that I do uh, to manage my symptoms and continue the healing process with post-concussion syndrome. So what are those things? Number one is a ketogenic diet. Now, uh, if you go back to uh, a few videos ago and look at me, I look pretty different. And part of that is, is that um, I have lost 35 pounds on the ketogenic diet. Um, on the ketogenic diet, which is basically a modified form of the low carb diet, um, I have found that I have more energy. Um, I have had less severe anxiety, depression, and hopelessness, and generally have felt more even overall. Um, I do the ketogenic diet because of studies that have been done about uh, ketogens, uh, or sorry, ketogens, I'm sorry, PCS. Um, so, uh, so basically, ketosis measures the amount of ketogens in your body. Ketogens can fuel the body and the brain. So ketogens are something that help with, with fueling the brain uh, and pla pass the blood-brain barrier. So, um, yeah, see, hello. Uh, so ketogenic diet has been very positive. Um, some of the other things that I've done, uh, sleep hygiene, so important. So sleep hygiene is basically this, no food or drink two hours before you go to bed, uh, no screens an hour before you go to bed. You go to bed roughly the same time every night and you get up at the same time every morning. You make sure your room is dark and uh, you try to keep that clean sleeping pattern every single night. Um, it's not easy, but let me tell you, it is really worth it. I found seven hours consistently, almost every night. Um, again, mood's better, energy's better, better sort of platform foundation uh, for healing. Uh, the next thing that I do and that I've done is a daily meditation practice. Um, I started with the Deepak Chopra 21 day meditation challenge. Such a good place to start. Um, I also really recommend the Insight Timer, which has a whole bunch of uh, guided and, and non-guided meditations, as well as a meditation community. And I also like, uh, if you, and this is only iPhone only, which sucks, um, but the Oak app, which is uh, another meditation, lightly guided, um, also a very nice meditation app. Now, I meditate every day for 20 minutes in the morning. Um, if that's a little long for you, I recommend starting small, like, five minutes, maybe five minutes twice a day, and then building to maybe 10 minutes and then 20, find your rhythm. Um, I find getting up, going to the bathroom and meditating really, really positive because every day I'm doing it. It's just part of my routine. I don't think about it. It's part of what I do every single day. When I'm planning something and I'm looking at the time, I always make sure I have 20 minutes before I have to start getting ready to do my meditation. Um, another thing that I do is I do, uh, and these are all things I'm starting with are all things you can do without 
seeing anybody or going anywhere or having a doctor. Um, I'll get into those shortly. Uh, another thing that I do is I bought a acupressure mat. Um, they sell them for under 20 bucks uh, on Amazon. And I lay on the acupressure mat for about 40 minutes a couple of times a week. And I find that really helps with the neck and shoulder tension and all over. It hits a lot of the acupressure points on your meridians. And I find that it really helps overall uh, with my energy, with my relaxation and my general uh, mood and wellness. Um, the other thing that I do, and I do this again on a daily practice, is that I have discovered Qigong. Qigong is spelled Q-I-G-O-N-G. It's the Eastern counterpart to some of the yoga uh, traditions. Um, it involves movement and breath, but most importantly, it's an energy management system. So it really gets you to be aware of your energy and moving your energy throughout your body. Um, I highly recommend starting with Ken Cohen. Um, he is the best gentle way to learn Qigong. Uh, he has a number of books and videos that I recommend starting with. Um, uh, I also like Robert Pang and Mimi Keto. I'll, I'll, I always forget Mimi's last name. Sorry, Mimi. These three, and I'll, I will link them uh, below in the, in the notes, um, have some of the best Qigong uh, programs out there. And uh, again, you can do this movement even if you're pretty symptomatic. Um, I found that you know yoga has been hit or miss for me. Um, weightlifting, complete miss. Um, a lot of sort of strenuous in the, in the exercise points have caused bad symptoms. For me, Qigong has been awesome. Um, I found, you know, these three people, uh, their work together is all complementary, uh, not free, but they all work together uh, in terms of the systems. And um, I, I can't recommend it highly enough. So in terms of external things, um, I am now doing acupuncture. I do community acupuncture uh, at North Shore Community Acupuncture here in Massachusetts, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, and also so affordable because it's done in an open setting instead of a private one. Uh, I love the positive energy I get from everybody in that space. Uh, everybody's there to heal and uh, it's really great. Um, I've also started doing cranial sacral massage and uh, I have a cranial sacral woman who is just so amazing uh, at working through some of the energy things that I'm dealing with and has, it's just been so positive. The number one thing, um, see if I'm missing anybody else. Uh, anybody else I go see? Ah, float. I go floating. And this is something I've done for a while. I'll do an individual video on it, I promise. Um, flotation therapy means that you're in a sensory deprivation tank in salt water that's dense enough that you float without any effort, that's at body temperature without any light or sound. Uh, it is bliss uh, for having PCS when you're overloaded. Think of this as the antithesis of overloading. The worse you feel with overloading, being in an environment that has no stimulus, your brain will love you. You get bored, and that's a good thing, but you will love it. It's fantastic. And of course, finally, and again, I promise a forthcoming video on this, I'm using medical marijuana. Um, I really like one-to-one -one strains between THC and CBD. I think whole flour and either, and really vaporizing it is really the way to go. I will cover this, I promise. I've got the, the stuff in my head ready to go. Um, February will not end without a medical marijuana video, okay? I'm committing this to you. I also really want to do a Q&A video to answer your questions um, and help the community out. I have been so blown away by all the comments on my videos, by the people who've reached out to me uh, on, on, on YouTube, on Facebook, through email. Um, you know, it's so amazing, all of you out there who are fighting and, and, and surviving this whole horrible, horrible condition. And my heart really goes out to you and your healing. And I just, I wanted to thank you all for, for really validating is the wrong word, but reminding me that speaking into my camera and sharing my experience openly, honestly means something. And that's healing for me. So I just wanted to thank you that, that when you're here watching these videos, when you're commenting, when you're sharing, um, it, it's part of my healing too. It's, 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 it's good. And if you're further on in your post-concussion syndrome journey, I highly recommend you find somebody who's further back along, who's in that dark hell, and mentor them. Uh, I have a number of people that I'm working with right now that I'm helping out, 
and it is incredibly gratifying and feels so good to be able to help share the knowledge and experience that I've had that I made it way, my way through some of the real dark corners of this and helping others. Um, so yeah, so that's sort of what I've been doing. Um, I have my good days. I have my bad days. Um, I have setbacks. I have times when I feel like I'm, I'm on top of the world. Um, Post-concussion syndrome is nonlinear. Um, and for me, the success has been coming out of really getting in touch with who I am now um, and not who I was. Um, who I was was who I was. And I'm, and I'm not. Um, and I won't be. And that's okay. Um, because some of the work that I'm doing, um, I kind of like knew me better, honestly. Um, I could do without all the overload and anxiety and cognitive fatigue and anger and, and sensitivity uh, to light and sound. I'd love to go to a movie and not pay uh, physically for it. I'd love to go to a concert. Um, but I find that I'm much more mindful. I'm much more sympathetic and empathetic to other people. I care a lot more about about people suffering and, and about life and about my family and about my friends and about, um, you know, the things in the world. And um, that's not bad. So, you know, if you're in a dark place in your journey and you're feeling lost and you, you, you feel like you, you can't get back to your old self, um, don't go back. Go forward. Go forward. Find, find this path that you're on. And, uh, you know, maybe you don't, you're not going to be able to resume your job ever again. You know, maybe you're not going to be able to do the thing that you've always done. Maybe if you're out of a sport, you got injured in a sport, your career in that sport is over. Um, but the potential that you have going through post-concussion syndrome, your understanding of suffering, um, your experience here prepares you for, for some pretty amazing things. And so it may not feel that way, but it is. And so you really have to follow the path that you're on through healing and to wherever you're going. So um, for me, my path, uh, hopefully continuing to get stronger and better. Um, if not, if this is as good as it gets, I'm living my life. Um, I am studying Qigong um, with a hope someday to teach it. Um, I am helping people with post-concussion syndrome, both through these videos and directly. And um, I've been told by a number of people maybe to do some life coaching. So I'm looking at that. And, you know, to me, that sounds a lot better than drinking alcohol and reviewing it. I don't know. I don't know about you. I mean, you know, it was fun and all, but this feels a lot more significant. So that's my update. Um, I promise I will be back this month in February with a video on medical marijuana. So hold me to it if you don't see it. Um, subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Give the thumbs up. I mean, you know, YouTube, whatever. Um, go ahead and share this if you know somebody who's dealing with post-concussion syndrome and, um, you know, hang in there. The truth is, is that um, you lose perspective when you have post-concussion syndrome on your bad days. So try not to, you know, try not to look out the window in a bad storm because you're not going to be able to assess things very well. You know, wait, wait until you emerge from some of the darkness to really start assessing things and, and looking at your life. Um, this is tough. Post-concussion syndrome sucks you know, and you're a survivor. If you're watching this, you're a survivor. So keep going, keep surviving, keep going. Thanks.